What's up guys? I hope everyone's having an awesome day. It is another really nice day here in California. It's like summer just doesn't want to come just yet. It's freaking awesome. I love it. Uh, and today we are going over the city bike from DJ Electric Bikes. Now, I gotta be honest with you, the first time I saw a step through bike, I was kind of just like, what's the point of this? I don't get it. I, it looks like you're riding on a big gooseneck or something. Wasn't really for me, but the more that I've ridden these things, the more that I've really understood um, kind of what they're for. Like obviously, these step through bikes with this, with this really low, um, stand over height this is going to be great for anybody with um maybe a bad hip a bad knee or just kind of back pain stuff like that somebody who or maybe it's a short end seam somebody who doesn't want to have to kick their leg all the way over the saddle in order to get on this thing and i don't really have any issues like that but even just for like riding around and kind of cruising like i took this thing to uh to the grocery store a couple of times and just like being able to get on this thing so easily it really had an appeal to me and I mean I get it this thing is you know step throughs in general and this bike included they're just they're so approachable and so easy to get on I mean check this out like compared to normal like this is how I would have to get on a bike normally swing the leg over you know kind of get on like this and with this bike it's just step through slide on the back and like that's it it's that easy to get on and yeah I don't know I kind of like it I'm it's it's definitely growing on me so before we kind of dive into this bike and really what it's all about, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the company, uh, how I got this bike. Um, basically, this is a, a direct order bike from DJ Electric Bikes, and all their bikes are direct order only. So what that basically means is these guys, they don't have any physical shops, and that means that you know you can't really see this thing in person before you buy it, you kind of just have to take almost a leap of faith to check it out and, and just pull the trigger and buy it. Now, in my experience, direct order only bikes, they, it has a couple of pros and a couple of cons that generally come along with it. So for me, the biggest pro, and I think this is kind of generally speaking with all direct order only companies is the, the price point is going to be quite a bit lower than buying it at a brick and mortar store so like for instance this bike right here this thing runs for $13.99 and I think if, if I were to pick this up at a brick and mortar store instead of a direct order only it probably would be you know quite a bit more money probably a couple hundred extra bucks to to compensate for you know the actual location the overhead the employees having to have physical stock around the globe like it makes sense um, you know you can save money with with direct order only and I think that kind of shows with the price of this bike and with most direct order only bikes now so obviously that's a big pro right but there are also some potential cons some kind of pitfalls that I found that go along with direct order only bikes as well and the biggest thing I've noticed is that on a lot of the bikes the, some of the pieces they just don't quite match like the fenders they don't they won't fit cor just quite correctly I have to kind of squeeze them and, and, and twist them and kind of bend them into shape to get them to fit on correctly. Maybe the front headlight doesn't, you know, fit, um, whatever. And, and in some cases I've actually had, um, you know, where like the company will say that it comes with X, Y, Z components and I'll get the bike physically in, in my hands and I can see that the, there's different components compared to what's advertised. Now with DJ electric bikes, that was not the case at all. It was super easy to assemble. Everything fit really, really well. I mean, this is a definitely an entry level bike, but as far as the quality of like the machining of the pieces, like it looks like it's pretty good. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick clip really quick of me putting this thing together. Um, and I'll talk about it right there. So I wanted to do a quick time lapse for you guys showing me putting this bike together. All in all, it only took about 15 or 20 minutes to get it fully assembled from the box. A lot of the components were already on there. The brake housing was already on. The rear cargo rack was already assembled. So it really wasn't that difficult. It was just kind of like some of the basic stuff, putting the pedals on, taking off all the packaging. As you can see, I got little scissors out and I'm cutting off all of the zip ties. There were quite a few zip ties, so I would definitely recommend uh, just grabbing some scissors instead of a knife so you don't scratch the paint. There are tools that came along with the bike, but I use my own tools because I'm familiar with them and I like them. Putting on the front tire was pretty easy, simple enough, and then adjusting the handlebars. 
Um, really, all in all, like I've said, it's, it's a pretty easy setup. Everything fit really easily. Um, I didn't have to bend anything into shape to get it to fit. It was just a pretty easy process from start to finish. And there are just a few seconds left here. I'm going to let this thing run out to the end just so you can see kind of the full, I guess, unbox experience. This is the front fender right here and the front headlamp. Uh, like I'll mention here later on, the front headlamp is attached to the arch of the suspension, so it does bounce around a little bit. But the front fenders and the rear fenders have little spokes that kind of um, attach to different points, so it makes the fenders pretty sturdy and they don't rattle around very much at all. So the last kind of potential con that I've found with direct order, direct order only bikes is that sometimes there can be a communication problem, it's a difficulty understanding the company, um, maybe even getting a hold of the company can be difficult and maybe they're not even that knowledgeable about you know the bikes that they're selling. Sometimes I've asked questions about specifics for the components and maybe they don't really know the answers. Um, and again, that was not the case with DJ Electric Bikes. Um, every time I called uh, the, the owner, every time I called the customer service line, the actual owner of the company, Daniel, was the one who picked up the phone. Super helpful, super easy, and I kind of thought that maybe he just recognized my number and so I was getting, you know, um, special special attention or something. So I, I called from a couple different numbers just to test it out for you guys to try to give you an idea of what the customer service would be like in a real world scenario. If you had a problem with the bike, if you wanted to ask a question and yeah, I mean, every time I call different numbers, picked up the first couple of rings and all my questions were, were answered. So that's, that's really cool. And I think that's really important for a bike like this or really any direct order only bike, because again, like I said, you just don't really know, um, what you may not know exactly what you're going to get and so you want to ask questions maybe sometimes beforehand um, now one of the kind of the downfalls of this bike i think is it only comes in, in one frame size here and one color so we've only got the 19 inch frame here um, and we've only got this color which is kind of like a like a pearly white with these red accents and it's really hard to, to see on camera i don't think the camera really does this thing justice but what it looks like to the naked eye is kind of like if you guys have seen the Toyota Priuses, kind of like that glowy kind of pearly white paint. That's what this looks like. It's almost a little like glowy, a little bit like luminescent, I would say, in the sunlight. It looks really good. I like this color. And um, yeah, they got a couple splashes of red accents, stuff like that. So let's dive into this bike, talk about, uh, you know, all the stuff that comes along with it. So I'll start over here with the, with the hub motor here. So this is a Bafang. 500 watt hub motor that comes along with this bike. A lot of the components here on this one are gonna be exactly the same, if not very, very similar to the components that are on the mountain bike, which we just reviewed and which is also from DJ Electric Bikes. But this motor, Bafang 500 watt, it's got 65 newton meters of torque. And you know, look, I've said this before, and as to date, I don't have a whole lot of experience with a lot of the higher end um, motors here like Court does, but I've tested quite a few of the Bafang motors and honestly, I've really come, I've really grown to like these motors. They're they're pretty quiet when they operate. They're pretty powerful. Again, 65 newton meters of torque. That's really good for kind of getting off to a start at a, at a low end or at low speed. Um, and yeah, they just, they seem to work out really well for me. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed them. Now this motor here has got a silver finish and I feel like it kind of, same thing with the mountain bike. It's got a silver finish here. And the only thing that's kind of a downside to me with this motor is it just doesn't really match the rest of the bike, right? I mean, you've got kind of a black and white scheme with red accents and then this motor really kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. So I, it'd be cool if they maybe had an option to black that thing out, you know, just kind of to match the rest of the bike here. That would be kind of nice. But yeah, this motor will drive this uh, bike up to a top speed of 20 miles per hour, by the way. And we've got the uh, cadence sensing pedal assist on this. Let's see if we can get a quick shot of that. The actual magnets here. Uh, you can't really see them, but yeah, maybe you can. So we got the magnets down there. It's a 12, 12 magnet cadence sensor, which is gonna have a little bit higher resolution than an eight magnet cadence sensor. But still, I mean, this thing, it does have a, it's pretty slow to start and stop. So when I start pedaling this thing, there's about a half second to a second delay from the time I start pedaling to the time that the motor actually starts delivering power. And that's kind of something that I've noticed with a lot of hub motors um, and the kind of you know, to, to articulate that just a bit further, when I start pedaling from a dead stop with this, it's about a half second delay or so, which isn't terrible. Um, but when I'm going, you know, close to full speed, 15, 20 miles an hour, something like that, it seems like it takes a little bit, a little bit longer for the cadence sensor to start 
detecting the motion. So sometimes it'll take two, even three full revolutions of the cranks before the motor kicks on. So what I'll do a lot of times is if I'm at a dead stop or even if I'm already going and I'm not pedaling, a lot of times I will just hit the throttle here and kind of override the pedal assist and then that will help me kind of get going. And then once I'm in motion, I start pedaling. The cadence sensor detects motion. I can let go of the throttle and let the cadence, let the pedaling kind of take over. But so yeah, 20 miles per hour top speed. You can actually adjust the top speed to about 24 miles per hour or even down to about uh, seven or eight miles an hour, something like that here in the control center. I'll show you guys that here in a second. Um, but this throttle is live zero miles per hour, which is, I think, really cool, especially because we've got a cadence sensor here. So basically with that throttle being live at zero miles per hour, it just means that when you're at a dead stop, you can use that to get off the line immediately instead of having to wait for this cadence sensor to activate, which, like I said, it can be kind of slow. So I really do like that. But one thing I do want to caution about having a live um, throttle here at the standstill is that if you're walking the bike, you know, and I've had this happen to me, if the bike is on and I'm walking it, just kind of going slow, whatever. If I forget and I tap the throttle by accident, like this bike can get away from you. And 500 watt motor, 65 newton meters of torque, like it, it's got enough pep to really just kind of take off and, and run away. So I just want to caution you guys just to be mindful that this thing is live. It's, whenever the bike is on, if it's in pedal assist mode one through five, it is live. So please just be careful with that. I don't want anybody, you know, getting hurt, run, letting this thing run away from you. This is another great use for the throttle I found, and that is just getting it upstairs. Because the throttle is live at zero miles per hour, you can kind of use it to finesse it upstairs like I'm doing right here in this shot. And let me tell you, it is much easier than carrying it, especially since this bike is so back heavy because of the position of the battery and the motor so far in the rear of the bike. So back to the frame real quick. Um, this is a, it's about 59 pounds this bike, which is a little heavy, but it's not too bad considering we've got the front suspension. Um, we've got a rear rack on here. We've got fenders. So it's not, it's not that bad considering, but you know, this frame, like many step throughs, it does have some frame flex here. And I think one of the, one of the biggest reasons for that is we've got this battery in the back, you know, right behind, right behind the seat post here. Um, the battery weighs about nine, 10 pounds. And then this motor in the far back here in the hub, this weighs about nine or 10 pounds. So just like, look at all the, look at all the weight. The weight is very much positioned towards the back. And that just means that whenever I'm, whenever I have been hitting like a little moderate bumps, like going up and down a curb, something like this, um, you know, I, I do feel a little bit of frame flex. And I think if you are to use this cargo rack back here, you might get even a little bit more frame flex. So just something to watch out for. I mean, we do have a, a little bit of a gusset here to help strengthen the frame, but even still, I can feel it. Now, again, I'm a 200 pound rider, so that <laughs> probably is factoring into it. And I'm typically carrying a backpack, you know, filled with like 25, 30 pounds of gear, something like that. So that's definitely adding some weight. So. A lighter rider, you guys may not experience that, but that's been my experience with it. Now the battery here, again, it's about 10 pounds. It's a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery. And what's cool about this battery is a couple of things. Number one, the charging port. This is a, a Silverfish style battery, by the way. And the charging port is a three prong charging port. And it's located up here on the top of the battery, which is cool because it just means that if you have this thing plugged in, you turn the cranks, you're not going to get, or it's very unlikely you're going to get interference with the cord while it's plugged in. And you know, if that does happen, you can damage the, the cord, you can damage the, the plug right here the, where, where it plugs in and then you might ruin a battery, that would suck. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, on some batteries, they actually put the, uh, the charging port down low and I think that's what this actual cutout is for right here, just for those types of batteries. Now, once this thing is turned on, you do have to use the key to turn this on. So you turn, put the key in, push it, one more, come on. There we go. Turn to the on position. And once the bat, once this is turned to the on position, the battery is live, but the key has to be left in before you can turn the control center on up here. Uh, but once the battery is on, you can actually check to see how much battery is left. You can hit this little button right here and you can see it's a little low. Hopefully that's showing up there. Now, the issue that I have sometimes with the key being having to be left in like this is that when I pedal, um, sometimes my my ankle or my foot can actually strike the key itself and you know that can be that can hurt my ankle it can hurt my foot it can maybe scratch up my shoes or it can even damage the key itself and perhaps again ruin the battery so what is cool though you can kind of 
kind of get around that because these keys fold a little bit, which is nice. It just kind of reduces the overall amount of like inches that this thing sticks out. So it just kind of shaves off a little bit of weight. Now to take this battery out, you have to release the saddle all the way. You gotta take the whole saddle out. Now, thankfully there is a quick release, so that is pretty easy to do. But you have to take the saddle out first, turn the key all the way to the left, and then it slides out pretty easily, just like that. Um, there is a handle here at the top, which is nice because it's easy to carry this thing, easy to pull it out. Uh, I mean, you don't want to drop these batteries. You know, these, these are expensive. You don't want to damage it and have to get a new one. But this is what the battery looks like. Again, charging port at the top. Tells you 48 volt, 13 amp hours. Four prong, little uh, kind of uh, indentation here. And then on the other side, we got it's beveled where it sits uh, behind the seat post. And then to put it back in, pretty easy you just slide it right back in like that give it a nice push make sure it's down turn it back on throw the saddle back in and lock it back up just like that pretty easy i mean it's not a huge deal but... and the good news is at least that this battery is low enough that you can pretty much you can re you can lower the seat almost to the very bottom here so that's about as low as the seat will go before it starts to interfere with the battery, which again is almost at the very bottom. And that's kind of nice for, I mean, look how low that seat is, the saddle. And that's kind of nice for, I think, people with a lower end, or shorter end seam, or people who just want to be able to put their feet, you know, like flat on the ground while they're at a stop. Being able to lower the seat that much, it just, it helps to kind of, I think give a feeling of, of, of comfort and safety. And really that's, I think that's what this bike is really all about. Com comfort, security, ease of use, stuff like that. And also if you notice here with this rear rack, like this thing is, they, they, um, DJ Electric Bikes, they, they put a little bit of thought into this, you can tell. Like the rack is positioned far enough back to where it, even if you load this thing up, it's not gonna interfere again with lowering the saddle back here, which can be an issue with some electric bikes where they just throw a, a regular rack on, they're not really thinking about it, and sometimes it can interfere with lowering the saddle and that kind of defeats the purpose, you know? So with the rack here, again, this was already, the rack was already installed when it came um, in the box, so I, you don't have to put that together, it's already done for you. And it's a, you know, it's a decent rack. It's got pannier blocker, so if you put bags on this thing, it's not gonna slap against the, uh, the wheel or interfere with the spokes, anything like that. You got a little uh, hook right here. I think Court was telling me this is for a, uh, like a little bike pump, an air pump. So that's kind of cool. You can throw that on right there. Got a little spring latch up here for maybe papers or just kind of thin stuff. You can raise this up, throw, the, uh, throw whatever's thin underneath there, whatever, stuff like that, kind of cool. Um, and yeah, let's talk about, talk about these fenders real quick. So these are pretty sweet fenders here. Um, they're plastic, and of course with plastic fenders, they're going to be lightweight, that's nice, but they're also generally going to rattle around a little bit more compared to steel fenders or even aluminum fenders, which might be more rigid. Now, what's nice about these fenders is I think a couple of things. Number one, look how far these things go over the wheel. That's, that's sweet, right? I mean, that's, that's covering quite a bit of the wheel, really gonna help keep that racing stripe off my back if I hit a puddle or something like that. Also, we've got an attachment point here for the rear fender, an attachment point here, and we've got these, uh, these wires that stick on to the back here, and then two more attachment points, one on each side. So these things are pretty, they're pretty stout. I mean, they really do not move around that much. Same thing for the front fender. We've only got one attachment point up here on the front, or on the back rather, but we do have these two, um, these two attachment points on either side of the front fork. So it keeps them from rattling. I mean, honestly, these things really don't rattle that much and that's, that's nice. Back here, 160 millimeter uh, mechanical disc brake in the back and in the front. Just kind of entry level tech drill brakes, nothing too fancy about these. They do have motor inhibitors built in. So whenever you depress the brake levers here, uh, it's going to cut power to the motor, which is, you know, it's nice. I don't think it's as important on a city bike here as it is on a mountain bike, um, but it's still nice. It just, just really helps ensure you have the, the shortest possible stopping distance. Nice safety feature. I really think that's a, a very important feature. And again, front brake levers here, um, pretty standard Tektro uh, brake levers with a rubberized edge right here. You've got these kind of black non-locking ergonomic grips. So these can spin around a little bit. Flick bell up here. We've got the control center, we got the independent button pad and the control center. And just real quick, I mean, I think the way this thing is laid out, it's a little funky. Um, if this was my bike, I probably would have slide this control center 
right here. And I think I would probably put this uh, independent button pad all, all the way to the left and I would put this bell probably on the right hand side it's because right, as it is, it's kind of hard to reach anything you know, with this setup, it's hard to reach the button pad or the independent button pad, and it's hard to read the control center. So I would probably move that around if it was my bike. And then going back up here to the front real quick, we do have a integrated headlight, and this thing does work pretty well. It's a Spininga headlight, same one as on the uh, on the mountain bike that we just reviewed, and it's got a it's got a good beam pattern. I like I like this light. Uh, this is attached to the uh, to the arch here on the front fork, so it's unsprung weight and it's unsuspended weight. And that just means this thing's gonna bounce around a little bit more as opposed to if it was attached to the frame, that's actually being cushioned by the springs here, or by the suspension. And on this suspension, we do have a, a 60 millimeters of travel, no lockout, and I don't think we have um, rebound, but we do have preload adjust. And I, again, these are very similar to the suspension on the mountain bike I just reviewed, but I think these are independent uh, preload adjust. So we turn one of these, turn the other one, and it, and, and it and it uh, adjusts each spring individually. So that's what it feels like to me. Now, up here on the front, by the way, we do have these two little um, two little eyelets right here, uh, two little bosses that you can actually use this for like a tr traditional V-brake if you want to, one on this side, one right here. But, okay, now I need your guys' help on this because I do not know what these are for. We've got, check this out, we have, four other bosses on this side. They're little screw holes. One, two, three, four. And we've got one right there on the right, one right there in the middle, and one right here on the top on the right hand side. And I even asked Cord about this and honestly guys, we're kind of stumped. So we're calling on the EBRs right now to help us out and figure out what these are for. Or maybe just tell us what would you use them for? I, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. Let's see, up here real quick before we go to the control center. Um, this stem is, is pretty sweet. I like this stem. It's a adjustable angle stem for, from 10 to 50 degrees. So it just means that you can change the angle of, this, of the handlebars here. You can lower them a little bit for maybe a little bit more aerodynamic, a little bit more aggressive position, or you can raise them up, raise the whole handlebars up, and it makes for a way more relaxed ride. And I think that you know with the front suspension here, this really wide seat, which has these uh, these rubber cushions underneath to kind of dampen you know dampen some of the uh, some of the shock. It's a really comfy ride, and that just goes back to like the whole point of this bike, I think, of or any step through really is just approachability, ease of use. Uh, so now the only downside to this is uh, this is only has one screw to secure this stem, and you know if you if you don't tighten this thing up really really tight, and if for some reason. You know, I'm standing up, I'm putting a lot of pressure on the front here, maybe I'm climbing a hill, whatever, going over a jump for whatever reason on this bike. This thing can lose its grip and the handlebars will suddenly dip down. So I just wanna caution you guys again against that. That's, I think, a potential safety hazard in my opinion. So again, just be sure to really tighten this thing down. All right, let's head over to the uh, control center here. So again, turn this on, make sure the keys turn all the way to the right. Go to the control center hold down the mode button for a long press. And there we go, that turns it on. So with this control center, this is the uh, King Meter J LCD control center. It's backlit, um, LCD, it's got a fair amount of information up here. But, so check this out, this is, it's, I just booted it up and it's on pedal assist level one. But let's say I was in pedal assist level five. Okay, I'm at the grocery store, I'm ready to put my bike away, turn it off. Whenever I turn this bike back on, it reverts back to pedal assist level one right here. So, you know, I, I wish that it would say whatever the uh, the previous pedal assist setting was, but not a huge deal. Also on here, we've got a four bar battery indicator on the top. Obviously not going to be super precise, 25% increments. Um, I always prefer to see a percentage indicator or at least like a 10 bar battery indicator. Top right, we have a clock. On the left here, we have the pedal assist level. It goes from pedal assist level zero, which means that the throttle is off and the pedal assist is off. So it just makes it a dead bike, just like a regular, any old regular bike. And then we got pedal assist level one, two, three, four, and five. And that gets you to the actual, the motor being turned on. So with the pedal assist levels here, it really feels like that each pedal assist level is almost just like a speed limiter. I don't feel much of a difference in power output from the motor. So like for instance, in pedal assist level one, with the uh, pedal assist, you can only get to about 
uh, 10 miles an hour or so. Pedal assist level two, you can get up to like 13. Pedal assist level three, it keeps ratcheting up until you get to the top speed of 20 miles per hour or whatever you set it to. Now what's cool though is regardless of what pedal assist setting I'm in, boom, I can hit the throttle as long as it's in one or above, hit the throttle and I can override the pedal assist level and it's gonna unleash the full power of the motor here and it's gonna get me up to my top speed pretty easily. And I weigh 200 pounds and with this motor, the 500 watts, 65 newton meters of torque, it's, it's, it's powerful enough to get me going to all the way up to 24 miles per hour on, on a relatively flat ground, which is, which is a pretty, pretty decent feat, I think, given, given my weight. Uh, on the right hand side here, we have the, the current speed. On the bottom, we have an odometer. And if you tap the mode button, um, you can actually switch between a tripometer here on the bottom and the odometer. If you hold the up arrow right here, you go from current speed to, it'll show you average speed. Let's see, hopefully you can see that. Hold it up again, it'll go to max speed, hold it up again, and it reverts back to current speed. If you hold the down arrow right here, it'll go into walk mode. Oh, which is pretty quick. Uh, but walk mode is nice, you know, especially if you're going through something like brush up a hill, you can just kind of use that and walk it beside you. And then if you hold up and the mode button on this, it will turn on the backlight and also the front headlight here. So as you can see, that thing is turned on. And then we've also got a tail light, which is on whenever the lights are on. And whenever you hit the brakes, this thing actually gets brighter, just like a car headlight. And we've got a rear reflector and we've got a front reflector right here. And with this white color, it just makes this bike really, um, kind of stand out I think and it makes it kind of visible at night which is nice this kickstand by the way this is a adjustable length kickstand and I, I actually did adjust this to make the stand a little bit more upright it was kind of leaning a little bit too far for my taste uh, pedals pretty standard here as well go aluminum pedals on this side up here on the handlebars real quick we have a seven speech Shimano SIS index shifter and a Shimano tourney derailleur. Again, guys, entry level parts for this, but I mean, it makes sense that some of these parts are generic, a little bit uh, kind of lower end on the quality scale because this is, again, this is kind of a value buy. This is an affordable bike at $13.99. So it makes sense that this company has to try to shave off some of the money somewhere and on some of these components, I think is, is kind of where they're doing that. So one thing I like about this though back here is we have a kind of a steel roll cage that extends down to the derailleur which is cool because if i accidentally tip this bike over this is just going to help you know protect this component from getting dinged up too much hopefully and it also should protect the power cable that runs into the motor um, and it might even protect from you know certain rock strikes or something just depending on, on how you do it this chain guard over here this is nice it extends almost the entire way um, to, uh, the entire length of the chain. And that's just, again, just kind of nice to help keep some of the mud off my, off of pants, off of skirts, skin, whatever. And just in, in conjunction with these um, with these fenders, these these nice long fenders, it should help keep a, keep the rider relatively clean, I would say. Um, so yeah, this is again, really, I think this bike is meant for this kind of surroundings, right? Kind of going just chilling. There's a turkey over there. Hi, turkey. Just <laughs> what is he doing? Just kind of chilling through like a neighborhood setting, um, low speeds, maybe going through like a, a town, a little city, something like that. And yeah, it's a fun bike, good value buy. And without any further ado, let's take this thing for a quick test ride. Here I'll just be switching gears from bottom to top. And this is just basically to show you the Shimano tourney in action. Remember this is an entry level derailleur. So sometimes the gears will hang and take a little bit of finessing with the uh, SIS index trigger shifter on the handlebar just to get it the right gear, to get it to shift. But you know, really all in all, it gets the job done. In this clip, I'll be starting and stopping pedaling really to give you guys um, an example of that delay I was talking about with the cadence sensor. So I'm gonna stop talking and just let you guys listen to yourself so you can hear that delay from the time I start pedaling to the time the motor actually kicks on and shuts off.
last clip, I'm just going to show you guys the suspension here in action. Yeah, you can see with the slow-mo, they are working for sure, but again, this is only 60 millimeters of travel, so about 40 millimeters less than the mountain bike, which is the other bike that DJ Electric Bike sells. And again, you know, going over grass, going up and down, just curves, stuff like that. That's where I can kind of feel the frame flex with this bike. And like I mentioned, if I were to throw some saddlebags or something on the back on the rear cargo rack, I probably would experience even more frame flex. But again, I'm a 200 pound rider, generally carrying around 25 pounds a year. So if you're a lighter rider, you may not experience this in the first place. But you can also really see with that slow-mo shot, the fenders really aren't moving that much. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for the city bike review from DJ Electric Bikes. Real quick in summary, this is a, a good bike, I think, for people who are looking to ride in, you know, this sort of surroundings, neighborhood, slow speed, stuff like that. $13.99, it's a good value buy. Um, but there is going to be some compromise with this bike. Again, we've got all this weight in the back. There's a little bit of frame flex, even with this gusset for added strength. Um, going over curves, big bumps, stuff like that. There's a little bit of frame flex in this. We have a lot of entry-level components here. We've got the Tectro brakes, Shimano S SIS index trigger shifter, Shimano attorney derailleur, um, just kind of entry-level parts. But we also do have some cool kind of upgrades. We've got the black spokes. We've got a rear cargo rack that comes along um, with the bike stock, adjustable length kickstand. Uh, we've got 60 millimeters suspension, front headlamp, or, uh, rear headlights, brake inhibitor, motor inhibitors. I mean, it, it comes with some, some decent stuff as well. So yeah. A little bit of pros and cons, a little bit of gives and takes. So I hope you guys dug this review. If you are going out to ride, have a great day and ride safe.